Back from Once Upon a Time. This is episode 13 of season 5, um, and I'm very excited to see what's going to be happening now we are in the underworld for a new arc, I would assume. Um, saving some souls, um, maybe meeting some people that we have loved and lost, slash hated and lost um, over the season, so it could be exciting to see where that goes. And the last episode was obviously the main like 100th episode celebration. We were introduced to Hades at the end, who I am imagining is going to be the villain of the piece for the time being. Um, King Peter Pan came back as well. Um, we had some really nice conclusions to everything with Regina and her father. Um, really beautiful kind of send-off for that character. Um, and yeah, it was just a really fantastic episode and I'm kind of still hyped from it even now and excited to see what they're going to do next with this whole story arc. So let's just get right into the next one. I don't want to go in there. <coughs> What's keeping us in here? Something you don't want to face. Well, we're gonna face it, well, so tell us. You'll never make it. We won't. But you will. I'll draw the hell this way. You run. Oh, oh wow. Emma Swan. Right. Now, how am I supposed to protect our daughter in the underworld? Carefully. Doing this alone. Oh, whose grave's this? I'm so sorry. Oopsie. <laughs> All according to my evil plan. Oh, shit. Oh, dear. Well. Careful holding that. Jesus. Hey, you're in the hundred. I know you. I'm Hercules. Oh, I mean, that makes sense. Well, the office should be empty, and no one knows it better than Henry. He'll be fine. He'll be there to protect him. Oh. All right, come on, let's go. I'm here to see a Robin and Henry kind of team up. Found something! Oh. Black currant juice? Where's Killian? Where is he getting out of here? What the hell is He's being eaten by a three headed dog. <laughs> Is just waiting for your parents to die so they can move in. Creepy, but that seems to be the case. I think we're well, that's horrible. Because teeth can crush your bones with a single bite. And those eyes. At least death would be quick. I'm not a hero. We'll be after oh, does Hercules teach her how to do all her stuff? Snow. You can't let the fear of failing stop you from trying. I mean, I can. So He's making me feel very bad about my arms. It's me an excuse to spend as much time as I can with you before I complete my final labor. Oh, I see. So what exactly is your last labor? It's the most difficult one of them all. <laughs> I have to kill you. <laughs> ah, okay. Hey, child muncher. <gasps> yeah! You're looking for someone. You're not a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> Actually... Everyone in this show it's is like young, story. considering like who and what they are. Part of the charm. It's been quite a life. You're the only one strong enough to defeat that beast. It's your destiny. Did he die trying to kill that thing? Someone needs to stand guard outside. And only one of us knows where to look at my mom's office. Mm. Be very careful. I'd be left for squeeze for him in there as well. <gasps> oh shit. Tell me, how is your mother? I was kind of hoping we'd see her. How is the one that killed me? She's fine. She's oh, well, okay. Well, um. <laughs> Oh, that's the hell. Leave her alone! He just destroyed like a thousand houses. There's more where this came from. <sighs> Little snake. I mean, you've got to give it a go, right? The completionist in me says, go for it. Oh. Or you could do that. He's a bad practice, you know? I imagine dying did knock his confidence a bit. Who? Who are you? My uncle. Hades? Mm. Don't look so surprised. Why does this hellhole look like Storybrooke? I have my reasons, and I don't have to share them with you. Leave them alone. But you will share it with the audience in a flashback episode. Cerberus killed you. I don't want you to 
know. Is that really that surprising? What did you do to him? That could be anyone's hook. It's not what I've already done. You should worry about now. Leaving for a better place? Or a worse one? I think I know where you'll end up. <laughs> Charming. Just like your family. And also Literally. probably... Oh, how I miss it. The music, the gin... <laughs> the second the thing gym. she misses is Jim. That's no fair. The sorcerer bequeathed the quill to all of you, but it I quite like that they're revisiting the whole author thing, though. So I thought that was really cool. Breathing entity. It's alive. Oh yes. Oh, it's gonna be pissed at you then. You snapped it in half. Sent it right down here. If I come back to life, guess what happens? The woman who killed me, your mother, is no longer a murderer. You see, you're helping me, Henry. You defeated me in a way no one thought was possible. You made me your friend. Hmm. By never giving up on me. So what's the difference this time? Mary Margaret can't help. In fact, we don't need her anymore. Snow White can. We need Snow White. Yeah. Regina will make a better queen than I could ever hope to be. So you're just going to abandon your kingdom? Oh, you can see on his neck when that's been rubbing against him all day. They must have shot this a lot. If I hadn't failed, I never would have figured out how to succeed. And now he can do that again in the present. Death. You want to face Sir with me? Yeah. Herb, Take one head each. Or cover one head in peanut butter and the other two will eat it. Oh, shit. Hello. That's an extreme alarm clock, don't you think? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> and the people follow her. I think my people need me more right now. <laughs> Smash cut to him being killed. <laughs> Brutally murdered. Oh my. So Charming did need to be jealous. <laughs> That doesn't look too bad, to be fair. Well, there's three of you. Damn, she really got into that. Nice. Yeah, you'd have been fucked on your own, pal. I understand why you died. I'm Hercules. Oh. Oh, okay. It's just me. Yeah, heart. You're the boy that tried to save me. Uh. Cerberus got me right after he got you. Makes sense. I was someone who, I guess, inspired people. An old enemy reminded me of that. Hmm. I just don't want to at the risk of forgetting who I was again. I don't want to be Mary Margaret anymore. Oh. I want to be Snow White again. Cool. Well, it's about time. <laughs> Did you find anything? Uh, no. Nothing. Get in. Henry. I kind of want these two to stick around. I think they're quite good. But now we have to walk into the light. <laughs> and if you don't cross before your uncle finds you, he knows what to do. That's true. I could watch them just do this for different people every episode. Oh. She moved on from this run. Good for her. Good for her. <laughs> My vindictive son. Did you know I have one? <laughs> for every soul your friends free, one of them is going to have to stay. Oh, damn. Ah, oh, he's going to carve the names in. Oh, no. Nah. That's rough, buddy. Okay, I loved this episode. I have a feeling I'm going to really enjoy the story arc, if this is the kind of thing that we're expecting. Um, because on the surface of it, you know, it's a fun little adventure with these characters that we only just met, kind of helping them out, sending them on their way, which is kind of the journey they set up at the end of the last episode. Um, but it also had a bit of plot advancement, generally. Um, 
with the idea of Henry maybe getting the pen back, be, properly being the author again, which is very exciting to me. Um, Cruella coming back into play as well. Um, you know, a lot of the key characters meeting Hades and confronting him. Um, stage being set for that. Seeing what Hook's situation is probably like right now. Um, and some big development for, I should, I was about to say Mary Margaret, but I suppose I should just say Snow White, um, which is a big deal. Uh, that was a big kind of character thing for her. Like, they've actually developed her character. When did the last do that? Like, my goodness. Um, so that was fantastic as well. Um, so they are, like, doing some cool character and overall plot stuff while mixing in with, like, a one-off Hercules adventure, I suppose. Um, and I, I guess it really is a one-off because they did walk off into, you know, a better place at the end. Which makes me sad because I really liked um, Hercules and Meg. Uh, I would have liked to have seen them maybe stick around for a bit longer. There were some characters where you're like, you kept them, you dragged them out for like half a season and then we only get one episode of these cool guys. But, you know, that's kind of the luck of the draw, isn't it? And the basis of this story of like having people cross over and stuff like that, you know, it kind of leans itself into one and done storylines and characters. Um, and it makes sense because if Hercules had stayed, you know, God knows um, what Hades would have done to him, you know, so they kind of, they made the argument there. But it sucked because I, I did really enjoy those characters and um, I thought the chemistry between them was really good. Um, I, I don't know the actor's name who plays Hercules. I only, I've only seen him in The Hundred before now, I think. Um, but he was really good in this. I I feel like he really sold, and this is kudos to um, Jennifer and the actress who plays Younger Snow. I feel like he really sold that bond with the Younger Snow, that kind of newfound kind of friendship slash attraction that those two had. Um, but him and Jennifer, I think, also sold the fact that there was this old friendship and connection between the two of them, and it, it did feel like they had that same shared history. Uh, I think that also comes from the fact that, you know, Jennifer's performance is echoed so strongly in the younger actress. Like, she embodies Jennifer's performance so, so well, that like, even the way she speaks and stuff, like, that's... That casting still blows my mind every time, and we've... I think we must have had that since season one, haven't we, at this point? I'm still like, God, that's so good! Um, obviously, she's a lot older now than she was when she first appeared. Um, but I, I quite like that we still echo back and they still keep that same actress and stuff if they can get away with it, because it probably was a bit later on in the timeline anyway, um, since Regina, you know, was used to being in the role of the stepmother at that point. So that was really, really cool. I loved that a lot. Um, and just highlighting how far you know, Snow's characters developed and Regina's characters developed, how they've developed together. Um, I loved the scene where Regina kind of brought Snow around, like, we can't just give up. Um, you know, I loved the, like, what was the line? She was like, you defeated me in a way no one thought possible. You know, like, you, I became your friend or you made me your friend or something. Like, that's such a good line. Um, a very once upon a time kind of thing. And the fact that, you know, Snow felt a bit down. She's like, well, all I have is, like, speeches about hope and faith and stuff. Um, and that's kind of more so the embodiment of Snow's character bleeding in somewhat into Mary Margaret. But now if we abandon that side of things and just fully embrace being Snow White again, um, there's a lot more to her than that. Because we saw, like, how she learned to, um, you know, shoot a bow and arrow and everything. Like, the... Uh, origin of that came from her bond with Hercules, which I really liked seeing. That was really cool um, to properly get a glimpse of how that started. Um, and I don't know if they've mentioned Hercules before on the show. I mean, David didn't know about him and didn't know that, well, he knew about him. He didn't know that Snow knew him. Um, so there can't have been that many mentions if there was one. But either way, it's still cool to kind of get an origin, even if maybe you know, Snow would have mentioned him sooner, but some people have secrets, I guess. Stories are to be told, and I don't really mind, because this was really cool in how they, um, you know, introduced Hades in the last one, so it makes sense that they'd bring in Hercules and even Meg at the end, um, keeping her identity a bit of a mystery. And it wasn't just like, well, you know, wink wink for the fans who, like, watch the Hercules movie or whatever, like, this is Meg, obviously those two are kind of a thing, um, from what I remember. Again, I'm not even sure when I last saw the Hercules animation, if I even have. Um, but 
they it wasn't just like well wink wink nod nod we paired them together off they go um they did kind of have albeit very brief they did they still did have a history in the show um because hercules died you know fighting the creature to give her an extra minute before she was also horribly murdered but still um it kind of worked out for them in the end and i liked how um hercules kind of needed to relearn the lesson from Snow White that he originally taught her when she was starting out um, and when she was younger. I thought the parallels and how that kind of came full circle when she kind of helped him through to a better plane was a really, really nice story. And I think the actor sold it brilliantly as well. So I loved everything with that. Um, the three-headed monster thing, I can't remember what it was called. I feel like it began with a C, did it? Maybe I'm talking nonsense, but who cares? Um, I also thought that looked very good considering TV show budget and stuff. Used it very sparingly, as they probably should have done. Kept it in the shadows for a lot of the time. It was just like some red eyes. Um, but when you actually did get a good look at it, I actually thought the design of it and everything looked really good. Um, so they made the most of that, I thought. Um, it was a, an interesting, different kind of enemy and ties it into the, the lore of Hercules, I guess. I, I imagine that was a creature that was in the stories or the movie or something, um, belonging to Hades. Um, so I think that was really cool and it's just escalating the threat of Hades further because now he's really pissed off um, and he's got the threat now that making Hook choose who needs to remain um, in you know the underworld uh, if they keep saving people so there's kind of stakes to that he's going to kind of want them to not save people now so there's lots of interesting different dilemmas going on and already Hades has kind of posed the proper threat because um, there are some stakes now like if they keep just acting up against him, um, you know, people might have to stay behind. I mean, they're not going to, because I don't think they're just going to kill off, like, four or five characters keeping them in the underworld, but um, who knows, they might get some getaway clauses and stuff like that, you know. Peter Pan may pull some shenanigans, Cruella seems to be wanting to pull some shenanigans as well, maybe that's all going to tie into things somehow and all merge together in the way Once Upon a Time often does tie things together quite cleverly. Um, so we'll see where all that goes. Um, but yes, loved the, Her the Hercules story um, and bringing Meg into it as well, tying them together, sending them on their way. The kind of bond between him and Snow, um, past and present. Um, you know, the fact that they had a bit of an attraction and then suddenly she's like, well, I have grandchildren now. <laughs> um, and she'd also, you know, she's found the love of her life and he's potentially just met his as well. So I, I like that it's kind of a fleeting potential lovers thing that it just wasn't not meant to be quite so um that's really good i really enjoyed how they settled that up um and seeing regina kind of scheme behind the scenes when she was still this you know wicked stepmother i guess um paying the bandits to ruin snow's reputation seeing that all fail as obviously it was going to um versus the contrast of how regina is now how her relationship with Snow is now, the fact that they're really good friends. Um, a great way of, again, highlighting um, how far those characters have come. And it's something they do with Regina's character a lot. Um, particularly the last episode really went into that. So the fact that they also tied in Snow into it, I mean, she's made the decision to just be Snow White now and drop the Mary Margaret name, is really cool and interesting and not something I would have expected any of the characters to do. Um, so I doubt Dave is going to be like, well... I'm going to be Prince Charming from now on. I'm not sure if, you know, just calling him Charming all the time would um, be the best idea, but maybe he will, who knows? Uh, but I love that Snow's kind of rediscovered that side of herself and wants to embrace that again. And Regina was the one who kind of really encouraged that, considering, you know, way back when she wanted to utterly destroy Snow White. Now she's in a position where she wants to bring Snow White back into the world. Uh, so I love how that story has kind of grown and changed for those two characters together. So that was all very, very good. Um, Hook's still in a bit of a pickle, but I like that um, we're still getting a glimpse of how his situation is and exactly how he's going to deal with having to maybe choose people to stay in the underworld. Could be quite something, but he still has a bit of faith and hope that Emma really is there coming to get him. Um, and yeah, They'll find him at some point, just don't know when or how, but he's in for a bit of a rough ride, I think. It's going to get worse before it gets better, but I'm intrigued to see where that goes. Um, and I loved Hades again. Uh, I think the actor's really good, and some of his speech patterns I really enjoy. Um, 
sometimes he'll like have unexpected gaps in between words that I'm not quite anticipating. So he just changes up his speech panning. I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Um, because sometimes it just feel like his words are really, really considered and it's like trying to pause for dramatic effect. Um, and he's a very fun boy and kind of character. I mean, his hair's freaking blue fire a lot of the time, so he's going to be quite OTT and flamboyant. I'm really liking what the actor's doing with it. Um, and he, he does have that presence, I think. He does have that kind of villainous um, side to him that he's not afraid to kind of show as well, which I like. Uh, he, he owns being the villain in a way others try to hide that sometimes. That's really fun. I like that quite a bit. Um, we also saw the Blind Witch again, very briefly, after she returns in the last episode. I'm just praising that because it's Emma Caulfield. Um, and I love her, uh, but it was a cool way of keeping her on the show for a bit longer, pointing them in the right direction with Hercules and stuff. So that was all cool. Happy to see her. Um, and yeah, Emma's still just trying to do what she does best, really. Uh, navigating the whole situation. Didn't get as much for Emma, I think, herself in this one. Um, she's still just on the mission to find Hook more so than anything. Um, but I also like that group's kind of willingness to keep Meg protected. Not that they knew her name at the time. Um, but seeing Hook kind of allow her the chance to escape, and then she ultimately did. They all kind of aided each other, even though Hook and Emma aren't together right now, they still kind of worked together to save Meg, which is quite cool. Um, and how I tied that into Hercules and the fact that he died and then the creature then killed her and, you know, him, like, meeting up with her again, her being saved, also helped them both to cross over and that was the last bit of his unfinished business, not just killing the creature. Um, and how they came to the realisation that they need to fight together to stop that creature. Learning from your mistakes and your failures is how you ultimately win the day. How, you know, um, Hercules learned that himself. He passed it on to Snow White, then she could like stop the bandits, and we could, we saw the beginning of that revolution. People kind of um, supporting Snow White against Regina, which is fun to see the origins of that properly as well. Like her first proper steps into the Snow White that we met in the original flashbacks and everything um, when she like first met Prince Charming and stuff. So that was all very cool, um, and I was hoping for a bit more of like Henry and Robin properly interacting and stuff, but there's still time for that. Uh, but I like them being paired off to go on a bit of a mission, but it was more so just to, you know, keep some characters separated and allow Henry to gain access to the office where Cruella was staying. Um, how she got in there? We'll have to wait and see. I wonder if she called through the vent as well. Because <laughs> it was like, she didn't magically seal it, did she? It must have been Cora, so was she just in there that whole time, just like chilling? Um, but yeah, I'm very intrigued to see more of her, and I'm glad they did bring her back into it, because she definitely was a standout of the um, second half of season four. I really enjoyed her episode as well. And the fact that she was just evil for the sake of it, as we saw in like her flashback episode, where she ended up dying as well. Um, and the idea that um, if Henry helps her not be dead anymore, it stops Emma being a murderer, kind of undoes that, which is a very interesting idea that I, again, you wouldn't have considered. So they're kind of doing some really inventive stuff with this kind of idea. It's not just about people and that and like helping people pass through to a better place or a worse place maybe it's about restoring them to life as well um i think peter pan said in the last episode he wanted the same thing so maybe we're going to get peter pan Corella team up if we see more of peter pan i imagine we will we must do i mean i'm just hoping and praying for that really because absolute king um but yeah i'm glad they brought her back into it there was a tease because we saw her car in the last episode um but i'm glad they did bring her back into it and uh, also very clever, the fact that the pen was like a living creature and it, you know, Henry destroyed it so it didn't fulfil its purpose and stuff. So it ended up there, so there's another pen for them to find and that could allow Henry to properly use his author powers again, which is something that I really enjoyed and found very interesting about season four. I, I thought it was kind of a shame in a way that they did just seemingly tie that up in a bow and say, well, that's done now. Um, so they found a cool way of bringing that back into it and that could mean some really interesting stuff for Henry's character as well. Um, and just the idea of like making Emma an unmurderer is intriguing because is that really going to be how it works? Like she still did do it. They're all going to remember that she did that. Um, it may not be as simple as that. So we'll see where that goes. And the fact that she, he um, Henry didn't tell Robin about that plan makes me think things are going to go wrong because it's a TV show as well. Um, so yeah, it's probably going to backfire in some horrible, horrible way. But we'll see what happens. And I'm 
willing to watch it because Cruella's a lot of fun to watch. Um, so yeah, excited for that as well. Lots of really, really fun stuff in this one. Um, in particular, the Hercules storyline I really liked, how they tied that into Snow White's past and Snow kind of rediscovering herself um, and trying to earn the Snow White name again. Her friendship with Regina, kind of really cementing that and pushing that forward was great. Um, and I really like Hades a lot as well. And I'm glad that Cruella's back in the mix and an interesting plot line potentially for Henry alongside that. Um, so really great stuff. Seemingly like a fun Hercules episode one-off thing, um, helping him pass through, um, which is something I could just see them do episode after episode anyway with different people. I think that's an interesting enough idea. But they've also done that in a way that elevates the character like Snow and develops her after so long and makes Hades more of a threat because he's escalating things further with Hook. Um, everything with that. Really, really good stuff. And I'm very excited to see what they do with it. Um, next, but another fantastic episode. I think I'm really going to love this arc and yeah, I'm intrigued to see what they're going to do next. But that's going to be everything for now and until my next reaction, thanks for watching.